So when you've installed the software, go to the Gizmo 3D Printers directory. Uh, the default location is C drive. You will then see a directory structure or file structure like this. Gizmotor is actually a shortcut to a bat file sitting in the bat directory. You have to run your files from this directory. It won't work from any other directory. Um, if you run Gizmotor from here uh, or this link, it will do uh, an, an update check. If you don't want to check for updates, run Gizmotor, no update. So uh, we're just going to start Gizmotor. It's starting up. Everything is all good. On this screen, when it opens up, select your printer. So the config files will have different vats in there that uh, will be shipping. Um, most user will, users will have the fun to do standard blend red. Uh, our Indiegogo users will have the fun to do uh, industrial blend red, most likely. So if you're not going to change your printer, uh, most people only have one vat, then I would say click on remember selection. I don't because uh, I swap the whole time between machines. Click on submit. If you did click on remember and you want to swap machines, just click on that button and you can change uh, your printer selection again. So here we can see uh, the size of the machine. You can right click, you can resize your projected area. So here we've, uh, we have a projection area of 200 millimeters wide uh, by 113. So it says the XY resolution is uh, about 104. So this is used um, when you want to do your calibration. We will have another video about calibration, but that links up with your current scale. It also links up with the projected distance because there's going to be checks in Gizzyprint to make sure that um, you don't print an item that's too tall that'll break the machine or uh, that it will actually um, let the item come out of the resin without heating the projector so all those things are important so make sure your projection area uh, lines up with how it looks in the real world so if you have your printer very much very close to the resin or other way around if you have your projection area very small here in Gizmator uh, Gizmator might think the projector is very close to the resin but in the real world you might have the projector far away or if you have the projector very close and here the projection area is very big your prints might hit the projector when they come out so make sure uh, about that so what we're going to do is uh, actually just take one of these uh, in move items that I've that I'm playing with and I'm just going to pull a speaker in so of course this thing doesn't have supports we would normally create supports in mesh mixer so you can right click left left click on the object to select it right click open mesh mixer so if if this is the first time you're using the software uh, it'll ask you to set up mesh mixer uh, so you'll have to download in and uh, configure you'll get a nice message in Gizmotor to help you configure uh, mesh mixer so there it says uh, it's starting up mesh mixer you can just click OK. So, norm the the thing normally with Mesh Mixer in this in this case it's not really a problem. Mesh Mixer will always move uh, an item to the base, and we will have another support or another video on on how to do support. So I won't go too much into this. Um, but if you do make modifications here, you have to export it to exactly the same file name, so that Gizmotor can then see that you you made changes. So I'm not going to do anything there now. Uh, that's for the future. Uh, again, if you click on the object, you will see on the left corner uh, this object. According to the calculations, it will cost uh, um, about four dollars fifty cents uh, to print. So I'm just going to click on slice all. For now, you can use uh, low quality there will be some profiles available for you 
again there's going to be a video explaining how to create profiles just select the layer height uh, select solid and let's go from there so we don't have any overrides in here at the moment uh, that is for a future video so all you need to do now is go through here very simple and these the different parts of the speaker showing up as you can see and we click on next uh, now here I normally select force PNG generation because the laptop that does my printing is not very powerful compared to my main PC this one so um, if you don't select force generation it'll just go through the slices and make sure everything is okay and then it won't actually generate the PNG files so you will be generating the PNG files on your machine on your machine that is connected to the printer uh, while it's printing so that could work for you it might not work for you maybe the PC is too slow uh, to do that so in that case click on force generation so I'm gonna do that for now this will go nice and quick so what it's actually doing now is it's um, slicing up the object into multiple images and those images are stored on a directory um, in the Gizmo 3D printers uh, main directory so if you want to go have a look at the slices you can actually go to see Gizmo 3D printers theme directory and that's where it will generate all the slices so uh, if you're not sure what's what's maybe maybe there's something wrong with your print um, who knows you can then also come and have a look at the slices to make sure it actually sliced correctly so it's almost done when uh, it finishes it will actually uh, save the files in the recent directory so there's a uh, in gizmo 3d printers there's a recent directory and in this case I have not done any slicing on this machine and there you can see the speaker dot gizmo was just created it also tells you uh, the location of the file and it tells you the name of the file so that file is really just a zip file you can open it up you can unzip it you can uh, go have a look at it here you can see all the zip file all the pngs the config file uh, it also includes the, the stl file so what this does is it helps you with uh, what we call remote repeatability so if someone else has the machine set up with the same projection area they will be able to just run this file and print exactly what you printed what we will do now is just start Gizzy print in this case uh, this is now the newest version of Gizzy print that um, will be released soon you don't need to select the port uh, all you need to do is click on connect it'll then try and connect on every COM port uh, that the machine actually has uh, it will send a message to each compound being the lamp message so that it can detect which compound is actually uh, the projector and which compound is the controller so for those with super speed you will have two controllers um, or two print two projectors and we will uh, probably need to get some kind of hub onto those machines so on Gizzy print select the same printer that you've selected before uh, the file in this case was already loaded now for us you can go and select the file and add it what this does is actually it'll run each gizmo one after the other so if you have a massive model with millions of faces uh, you won't be able to slice that in gizmo door so go and and um, slice it up in, in another tool bring in the smaller pieces in gizmo door slice it create a gizmo file 
and then populate Gizzy print with those Gizmo files and you will then be able to print uh, items with huge number of faces uh, and it won't be a problem so click on next this is just the file information the profile that was used uh, we will most likely add some more information in the future on the screen here we uh, have the calibration screen on my second monitor I have a black window that is showing up now that you can't see uh, if I click on display calibration in white it'll show the first layer in white if I click on display calibration red it'll show the first layer uh, in red and I can then hide that layer I can also show a 30 millimeter square cube so that um, I can do a calibration or a calibration grid the calibration grid we normally use for super speed uh, but that's a next tutorial the rest of the stuff uh, play around with it uh, just remember whenever you move the bolt plate uh, keep your finger on the power button to make sure uh, nothing goes wrong the printer can rip itself apart it can hurt you it can damage itself uh, just be very careful the the ball screw and the motor and the gearbox is very very strong it I have seen uh, what it can do so please be very very careful with that uh, XY offset is just to move the image around on the bolt plate and then the image scale so this image scale scales the PNG itself so it's really not something you want to use um, except you know there's, there's some situations but um, this is exactly why there's loss of uh, image quality okay click on next um, here we we have recalculate print time you can start stop repackage all these things will be exp is explained on the blog you can see your display settings uh, for the print that we're doing now in this case the depth depth is 1006 seconds uh, when it dips it'll stay below the resin level for six seconds it'll come back up it'll wait for six seconds before it displays it will then display for 3.5 seconds and after it displays it'll wait 200 milliseconds uh, before it does the next move so um, if you modify these values you can click on save settings to config file that will then save these settings to the config.xml file in the temp directory um, so when you for instance when I come back and I move forward it'll load again the details from the config file so if you want to keep your details save it in the config file if you had to modify these settings for some reason um, and your print worked uh, as you wanted it to work but you had to modify click on repackage gizmo file it'll then create a new recent new gizmo file in your recent directory and again you can then use that to reproduce exactly the same print so if I now click start the, the print will start uh, actually printing uh, of course you can't see anything now because it's showing on my skin, second screen um, but that is now how uh, it should look and that's it that's your first print thank you very much